The Duke of Sussex will become the first member of the royal family for more than 100 years to give evidence in court this week as he enters the witness box in his legal battle against Mirror Group newspapers. Prince Harry claims his privacy was breached by journalists and investigators working on 33 stories about him dating back decades. MGM has apologised for the use of unlawful methods to gather information, including phone hacking, but says executives were unaware of what was going on. Here's our Home Affairs correspondent. Correspondent Tom Simons. He's on a mission. Prince Harry surprised everyone by turning up in person in one of his other court battles against the newspapers. But this week, he'll enter the witness box. The first royal to do so since the future King Edward VII gave evidence in 1870 in a slander case about a card game. This time, it's about dozens of stories the Mirror newspapers published about Harry, his social life, his girlfriends, his time in the army. 33 stories will be examined in court, and the focus, how journalists obtained them. It's claimed investigators like this man, Glenn Mulcair, were paid to illegally access mobile phone messages or make calls to blag personal information, phone logs, medical records, bank details, a shadowy network dedicated to quickly getting information to back up stories. It's claimed the Duke of Sussex was top of their list of targets. But these allegations date back long before his marriage to Meghan. There was massive press interest in the identities of his early girlfriends, like Chelsea Davy. One veteran of legal battles against the newspapers says, for the son of Princess Diana, it's personal. He doesn't want money. He doesn't want uh, a resolution which gives him a quiet life. What he wants is his day in court. He wants to call Mirror Group to account for what they've done. And the only way he can do that is a trial. I would bet a substantial sum of money that Prince Harry has been offered a six-figure sum to settle this. Because as far as the Mirror is concerned, this is existential. For the newspapers, now owned by Reach PLC, losing this case could add millions of pounds to the cost of settling claims. It has already admitted that three newspapers, including the Daily Mirror, once edited by TV presenter Piers Morgan, did use illegal methods to get information. But he denies knowing anything about it, as did the company's former chief executive Sly Bailey, who's given evidence. The current case is mostly about the scale of the scandal and possible financial penalties. Prince Harry is most likely to appear in this court tomorrow. He'll face barristers for the newspapers who may address him as Sir while attempting to knock holes in his case, while the world's media inevitably watches closely. Tom Simons, BBC News, at the High Court. Well, let's talk live now to Tom Simons, who's at the High Court. And we'll, we'll keep an eye over your shoulder, Tom, shall we, just in case anybody uh, uh, turns up. I don't suppose maybe it's a bit too early just now. But just uh, talk us through what you're expecting today. Well, what we're not sure about is whether Prince Harry will come today. It is possible that it will slip till tomorrow. We're expecting the first order of business at the court to be opening statements uh, by his side, by the claimants, as it's called in court. Uh, and that's not just him, that's also uh, uh, barristers for Nicky Sanderson and Michael Turner. They're both actors. And Fiona Whiteman, who is the ex-wife of the comedian Paul Whitehouse. Um, and after that, perhaps opening statements from uh, the defence Mirror Group newspapers. That might take all day, so it might be that Prince Harry doesn't appear until tomorrow. But as you can see, there are plenty of journalists who expect and I, pro I suspect hope that he's going to turn up uh, today for his moment in court. And when he does enter the witness box, most of the questioning is going to be from the defence side. Cross-examination, uh, Barrister Andrew Green KC are likely to put to Prince Harry that these stories weren't gathered illegally, unlawfully by private investigators and phone hackers, uh, but by journalists simply calling up their sources, people in the palace, people in Harry's group of friends or people he might have met in a nightclub, for example, or during his time at the mil military, in the military. And, and so that will be the battleground. What was the source of these 33 stories and were they legitimately obtained? Uh, and as you say, it's quite a, a legal battle. Uh, he is also taking on two other newspaper groups, uh, the Associated Newspapers Group, which publishes The Mail, and News Group Newspapers, the publisher of The Sun. Uh, just to point out, it's really important to understand this, that 
uh, Mirror Group newspapers has apologised for unlawful uh, news gathering techniques. It says they were used, they did lead to stories being written. What it's contesting is the allegation about these 33 stories and Prince Harry and the claim that this was something that was endemic at the company uh, that not just journalists but also news desk editors, senior news editors and executives knew about it. That's important because it will decide what damages are given uh, should this case succeed. Yeah, can you tell us a bit more about that? Because this was at the beginning of the trial, wasn't it, that it apologised to Prince Harry. Was it over one particular incident and did it explain, uh, did it ad admit to, to, to certain things? Can you tell us what it actually admitted to? Actually, the apology was in 2015. Uh, there was a previous case involving the actress Shobna Gulati, who won a case against Mirror Group newspapers along with uh, a few other claimants. At that point, it was clear there had been unlawful activity at these newspapers. And at that point, uh, Trinity Mirror, which is the company that took over from Mirror Group newspapers, apologised in its own pages for what had gone on. Um, what you're referring to is a brief apology that was given right at the beginning of this case for one particular incident involving uh, investigations by a private investigator into a nightclub that Prince Harry visited. Um, so the apology is a broad apology. What this case is about is how far the scandal went, how big it was, how central it was to the type of gathering of news uh, that, that newspaper journalists uh, did and the private investigators who worked for them. That really is where the battle line is. OK, thank you so much. Uh, Tom Simons for us there at the High Court, and I expect we'll hear plenty more from him throughout the day today.